Hello, everyone, and happy Pi Day. My name is Kelly Igorova. I am the Assistant Dean of Graduate Admissions here in the College of Engineering. I want to welcome you to today's session and start by saying that today is an opportunity for students to, um, if you are a prospective student, to learn a little bit more about our programs. Um, if you are an admitted student, we'll talk a little bit about what to expect um, as you begin your journey uh, here at Northeastern University. We will have a Q&A session at the end, and so feel free to put your questions into the chat and um, we will go through uh, at the end with a Q&A. A little bit about Northeastern University. We are a top ranked R1 research and experiential learning university. We're ranked uh, number one in co-op and internships in the United States, and we have uh, the oldest co-op program in the nation with a very well established um, database of uh, professional organizations and contacts in industry where our students do pursue a co-op. Northeastern is comprised of 10 colleges and schools uh, with over 40,000 students. It is part of a huge global campus network where we have a uh, campuses here in Boston. The College of Engineering is also in Seattle, Silicon Valley, Vancouver, Toronto, Arlington, Miami, Oakland, the Rue Institute in Portland, Maine, and continuing to grow uh, across the globe. You can see here um, where the, the larger uh, Northeastern has campuses. Um, as I mentioned, we are at almost all of the campuses that we have programs offered. Um, and we hope that you consider applying uh, not just to Boston, but do consider other cities and opportunities where there may be um, a booming industry in the field that you are interested in pursuing. Our Dean says that good engineers solve problems. Great engineers solve important problems and transformative engineers discover and solve important problems. At the College of Engineering, we are producing transformative engineers who have a global impact. When you come to Northeastern University, the intention is to connect your classroom theory to your industry practice. So whether you are interested in pursuing an MS or a PhD, whether you are interested in going directly into industry or uh, if you are interested in pursuing academia, if you're an MS student going on to a PhD, uh, going into a research position, we hope that your experience here and all of the resources that are available to our graduate students help you to become a transformative engineer, a mover and a shaker of the world, and somebody who has a true impact. We have six departments within the College of Engineering bioengineering, chemical engineering, mechanical and industrial engineering, civil and environmental engineering, electrical and computer engineering, and our multidisciplinary engineering program that we call MGen. And within these different departments, there are programs and concentrations within the programs. We have um, a, a page on the College of Engineering website where you can see a list of all of the programs. And I do encourage you to look at um, the large menu of of programs, there are about 34 of them, uh, where you can see um, areas that you may not have considered studying. So for example, if you are a mechanical and industrial engineer, I do recommend that you also look at uh, human factors, advanced and intelligent manufacturing. If you are a chemical engineer, uh, consider applying as well to uh, pharmaceutical engineering and bioengineering. Bioengineering, consider applying to programs, uh, concentrations within electrical and computer engineering, as well as chemical engineering and pharmaceutical engineering. Electrical and computer engineering, we have some of the best in the world uh, faculty within our Internet of Things um, and our wireless network and engineering programs. Those are uh, newer programs that have launched recently and have incredible faculty where you um, will be directly connected. So you're taking yourself out of um, still within the electrical and computer engineering department, which is very big. But in those programs, you'll have a direct relationship with faculty. And I think that you'll find that um, 
having access to Josep and Stefano um, will ultimately create and uh, provide opportunities for you into the industry um, that will undoubtedly shape your career. Similarly, if you're applying to our information systems program, uh, whether it is Bridge for non-engineers or um, our direct information systems program, we have campuses. Uh, we just launched our Miami campus. For those of you who are not interested in sending cold weather, um, if, you're, if you want warmth all year long, sunshine, uh, do apply to our Miami campus. In addition to getting our impressive 25% uh, scholarship, um, you will have, again, an opportunity to be very closely connected to the faculty um, in a way that um, you're not necessarily in a, a huge environment. Um, having an opportunity to be directly connected to experts in the industry in Miami, which is a growing and booming economy. Uh, we recently launched uh, Information Systems Bridge in our Arlington and our Toronto campuses. And again, um, smaller cohorts, direct connection to faculty, and absolutely incredible experience in both Arlington and Toronto, Canada. Across the College of Engineering, uh, we have a larger graduate uh, student body than we do undergrads, which is very unusual. And this speaks to the vibrant health of our programs, uh, the impressive faculty that we have teaching, the connections that we have to industry, and the real need for graduate level engineers to go out into the world um, and create uh, instruments and to create and build our cities um, that are really progressing our society. Within the College of Engineering, we have degree levels from, from bachelor's up to PhD. Over 380 full-time faculty with um, almost a third of those being tenured and tenured track. The College of Engineering contributes to a large majority of the Institute's uh, overall research budget. So for those of you who are interested in the disciplinary programs and or pursuing a PhD, um, know that there is a very large emphasis on research funds, securing grants, um, and having incredible research opportunities for our students. As I mentioned, um, we have several programs here in Boston. Um, it says 31, but I think that we're actually up to 34 now. Um, we have a, a growing global campus network. Uh, so I will have a slide in a little bit that actually outlines which of these programs within the global campus network in Boston have scholarships associated with them. But for you to understand, um, we have uh, many programs, whether you're interested in studying in Toronto or Vancouver, Canada, or if you're interested in studying in a warm climate of Miami, the tech hubs of uh, Arlington, Seattle, and Silicon Valley and Oakland. Oakland, which is uh, formerly Mills College, has an absolutely beautiful campus feel. Uh, if you're looking for uh, something like our Boston campus, but at a, a beautiful location um, in, in sunny California and um, something that actually feels like a campus, um, very quaint and beautiful, um, has been awarded one of the most beautiful campuses in the United States, then I do encourage you to consider Information Systems and Information Systems Bridge in Oakland. Our faculty are impressive. Many of them come from industry. Uh, if they don't come from industry, they have, uh, in some cases, decades of research experience underneath them. Uh, we have 140 that have received the Young Investigator Awards. We have 70 that are NSF Career Awards, uh, three NAE members, and over 100 professional society fellowships. So you are sitting amongst some of the best and the brightest, whether you are here in Boston or if you are attending one of our global campus networks. Um, we ensure that all of the faculty that we hire are dedicated to the commitment of our graduate students and that they are interested and invested in the, gro in the greater global campus network and uh, the progression of engineers through our society. We have amazing, outstanding facilities here. 
Uh, on the left-hand side of the screen with a spiral staircase, you can see our interdisciplinary science and engineering complex. This was built uh, several years ago and uh, has now housed our bioengineering, chemical engineering, robotics labs. Uh, we have some of our um, mechanical and industrial engineering lab spaces here. Um, truly beautiful and amazing. Uh, for those of you who are interested in studying bioengineering at our Rue Institute, uh, where you would have an opportunity to um, dive directly into Maine Medical and uh, Jackson Laboratories, uh, you would also have the opportunity to commute back and forth between Boston and the Rue Institute. So um, one day spending time at the ISEC lab and the next day uh, spending time at uh, Jackson Laboratory. Just an absolutely enriching experience for our master's students in bioengineering. Uh, next, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, this darker building, is our EXP building. And um, what you see, which is not super clear in this picture, but I will tell you, is uh, at the front of the photo, you see um, a shadow with lines through it. That is actually a bridge. And that bridge directly connects uh, the building that I'm sitting in right now, which is Snell Engineering, to the ISEC and the EXP buildings. And these buildings have state-of-the-art research facilities, some of the best wet labs uh, in, I would argue, in the country. Um, we have some of the most impressive research happening here and uh, a truly wonderful opportunity. For students who are interested in studying in um, Oakland and our global campus network, we are preparing for you um, virtual tour videos. Uh, we've just concluded the Oakland video. We'll send that over and post it online um, for information system students to see our Oakland facility. And uh, the most important thing to us is that you understand no matter where you're sitting in the world, uh, you have an opportunity to experience a tour, a virtual tour of Northeastern. And so if you need anything from our team, uh, if you say, uh, hey, I'm interested in seeing the mechanical engineering labs, um, contact a member of our ambassador team. They would be happy to go and take a quick photo for you. Um, or we can work on videos and ensure that you feel and your family feel uh, deeply connected as you begin your uh, journey to Northeastern. As I mentioned, research and experiential learning are at the heart of Northeastern. We have uh, and growing $118 million in external research awards. This has gone up 77% between 2019 and 2023. These research awards fund 20 different multidisciplinary research centers and institutes uh, that are uh, accompanied by funding from eight federal agencies. And we focus on three key themes, uh, that is health, security, and sustainability. So whether you are pursuing an MS or a PhD, if you are in one of our five disciplinary departments, you will always focus on health, security, and sustainability, which we see as uh, the crux of our society and one of the most uh, important things that we can do as engineers. A quick overview of the research centers. Um, we have um, these sit between various departments and um, in some of these cases it's obvious, um, but in others um, do some research. So for example, ALERT um, is funded through the uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Uh, we have the Institute for Chemical Engineering of Living Systems at Northeastern University. Um, we also have, and I can't yet uh, say exactly what it is, but um, we have um, a very booming industry um, and facilities that are being developed to accompany that, that we expect to come online um, in the next uh, year. And so if you are a part of Northeastern University, um, we expect that you will be sitting in a very unique, a very in-demand field uh, here at the university that is being heavily funded. Our graduate co-op program, so accompanying our research, is the experiential side of the house. And this is uh, an opportunity, again, for students to connect their classroom theory to their industry practice. Students gain real world experience as part of their academic curriculum. Uh, in the last year, we had over 3000 uh, co-op hires of which half of those were our graduate students at the MS and the PhD level. We have a database of over 3000 employers. And if an employer is not in our database and you are interested in working 
With them, we have an amazing team of co-op faculty who are here to help support that. Our students pursue a co-op in over 18 countries, 47 states within the United States. And as you can see, um, it is um, a large percent of our graduate students, 52% actually pursue a co-op as part of their job. I'm sorry, as part of their academics. And so uh, what defines a co-op? It is um, not an internship. This is a true opportunity for you to have an experience in the engineering field prior to graduation, so that when you receive your MS or your PhD from Northeastern University, you are considered competitive in the workforce. You are not going into an entry level position in many cases. Rather, you are saying, I already have almost a year of experience as a working engineer, and this qualifies you uh, in many cases for a higher level uh, position, which of course we hope equals a higher salary. It is full time, so 35 to 40 hours a week at the employer's office for four, six, or eight months. Uh, it is in many cases a paid experience and it is recorded on your transcript. If you are an international student joining us on an F1 visa, you would utilize your CPT as part of your co op. A co-op is an opportunity to advance your skill set and explore your areas of interest. You learn firsthand in your chosen field and develop valuable job search and interviewing skills. As part of the co-op search process, you go through um, an introduction to co-op course uh, where you actually have an opportunity to um, understand exactly what is the interview process, what is ex expected on your resume and your CV, um, what is uh, the expectations for writing a cover letter. Whether you're actually interested in pursuing a co-op or not, I encourage all graduate students to utilize this resource. I think it is absolutely invaluable. Uh, it is something that is offered here to you. Um, it is much like many of the resources that, that we have at Northeastern, uh, an opportunity to advance your skill sets, to develop as an engineer, and to go out and graduate with confidence that you have utilized all the opportunities that Northeastern has in order to become successful. We have a wonderful team of our co-op faculty who are here to help with our student services map your timeline. So you are able to say, I'm starting in January. After two semesters on ground, I'd like to go on co-op. Or after three semesters on ground, I'd like to go on co-op. They will make sure that this aligns with the courses that you're interested in taking and, um, and really pave the way for you to have a successful academic and experiential journey. Here are some of our co-op coordinators. Um, the faces have changed and grown over the years, um, but it is a truly wonderful, wonderful team who are here to support you. Next, we have our team of graduate ambassadors. Our graduate ambassadors are here to assist with your program specific questions, uh, what to expect in your new city and housing. Um, I encourage you to connect with a member of the graduate ambassador team using the URL here. Um, we have um, ambassadors in all of the programs across all of the global campus network. Um, the exception, I would say, is our Miami campus, as we recently launched it, although we do have a very enthusiastic um, batch of uh, first admits who we're building the community within Miami, and they would love to connect with you um, as you uh, consider joining us in our warmest campus climate. Our ambassadors can assist you with department and program specific questions, uh, the student experience and to give their perspective, coursework, relocating to your campus and what to expect and things to take advantage of during your time at Northeastern. Ambassadors do not have access to admissions decisions or status. They can't evaluate your application eligibility or your profile. Um, and they are not available to help with course registration, troubleshooting, your I-20 or your visa status, or any technical issues that you may be experiencing on the portal. But we do have a wonderful team of technical specialists and graduate admissions team members who are here to help you with those. 
um, our ambassadors create uh, for those of you who have been accepted. Um, or if you're just interested in learning, it is in our new student info and orientation page. But our ambassadors have created an impressive global student handbook uh, for students who are admitted at both the MS and the PhD level. So this is a 70 page handbook that tells you everything that you need to know about becoming a graduate student at Northeastern. So if you're coming here to Boston, what does it mean if you're talking to someone outside of engineering and they say Snell? they're probably talking about Snell Library. But if you're talking to an engineer, they're talking about Snell Engineering. If you're studying in our Seattle campus, where do you find the printers? Um, if you're studying at the Rue Institute, where are the labs? Uh, so all of this is outlined in the step-by-step -step guide um, in the, the simplest and most helpful form uh, and has been heavily vetted by our students. So if you have any questions, uh, any hesitations as you prepare to come to Northeastern, Visit the new student info and orientation page, scroll under to uh, from your student ambassador and access that handbook. They're available for engagement on WhatsApp, Weibo, Facebook, Instagram, uh, also on LinkedIn. Um, they will host for all of our admitted students, uh, admitted student WhatsApp groups. So look for email communication from them with the invitation to attend the admitted student WhatsApp groups. We strongly discourage you from attending uh, or joining other admitted student WhatsApp groups that are not run by the ambassadors. And I say that because we've been in those groups and we see a plethora of uh, misinformation being circulated. So if you want true and vetted information with direct lines to the programs and to the admissions teams, join our admitted student WhatsApp groups that our ambassadors run. You can also see some of our program specific recordings on our YouTube channel that is hosted by the ambassadors. Uh, they have wonderful research specific uh, YouTube uh, videos that we've hosted for webinars with our faculty. And uh, if you're interested in applying to the PhD, best practices when applying to a PhD program. They do respond to student inquiries on our COE admissions page and you can email them directly if you have a question. Um, I do find that many of their emails go to the junk folder. So um, I recommend that you always check your junk folder to make sure that you're not missing any emails either from the graduate admissions team or from our student ambassadors. And get involved. As part of your time at Northeastern, we have our career center that will help to map your career uh, and to help you prepare for your time in industry or after graduation into your next academic journey. We have an amazing uh, team of uh, faculty who are here to help uh, connect you and, and build your academic journey. We have our student clubs and our student organizations. There's over 35 within the College of Engineering for our graduate students to join. There's over 150 student clubs and organizations, whether you're interested in uh, personal, like sport or professional. For you to join. Um, you are sitting, no matter what city you're in, uh, whether it is Seattle or Silicon Valley or Miami, uh, you are sitting in hubs of knowledge and a wealth of information. Um, I do remember uh, speaking with someone and I asked them, what do you love most about the city that you're in? And they said, I can be in the coffee shop and I don't know if the person next to me is my colleague for the future or a Nobel Prize laureate and or, or both or both. And I think that that is so important because Northeastern and all of our campuses have been selected to enrich the experience of our graduate students and to make sure that as you're getting your cup of coffee, uh, you might bump into uh, your colleague who you're going to walk to class with next, or you might bump into somebody who has invented something that has completely changed the way that our society works. And I can't say this enough. I have seen it when I attend, uh, when I walk around Boston. I have seen it as I walk around Miami. I've definitely seen it when I was in Silicon Valley. I had some of the most uh, incredible interactions with individuals who were not affiliated with Northeastern, um, but whom were just uh, happened to be in the same place at the same time as me. And so consider all of the resources that you have here at Northeastern. 
We have our team of co-op coordinators. We have our Office of Global Services for our international students who are joining us. We have our student services team, our Global Student Success Office, and our Career Design and Employer Engagement Center. Next steps. For those of you who have been accepted to Northeastern University, congratulations. As I mentioned, there is our new student information and orientation page where you will get all of the information you need about orientation, what to expect, uh, all of your course registration information will be posted there in the summertime frame. We have um, information about the student ambassadors and anything else that you may need. The Student Ambassador website is an excellent resource. They have blogs that they've posted where you can say, what do I need to pack in my suitcase? What don't I need to pack in my suitcase? And what should I get when I arrive at Northeastern? Uh, so your Student Ambassadors has, have created this toolkit for you. And we really do encourage that you use it. Um, make sure that you've paid your enrollment fee. That $100 enrollment fee uh, is deducted from your tuition. So when you go to pay your bill at the end of the year, it will be your uh, tuition per credit hour minus the $100 that you've already paid. It will allow you to activate your My Northeastern and your Husky email accounts. You'll want to begin your health report uh, through our UHCS uh, team. And if you're an international student, apply for your I-20 and begin the visa interview. If you're joining us in Toronto or Vancouver, you'll want to start the POA process um, and begin securing your spot uh, to come to Northeastern. Our student ambassadors also run housing groups. Uh, these groups are an opportunity to connect with students that are in the city that you'll be studying in to find fellow engineers within your program or outside of your program um, to, to live with. And we also have a, a wonderful off-campus housing team to ensure that you do not fall into a scam. We know that it can be um, very overwhelming trying to find out what neighborhoods to live in, uh, reputable landlords, et cetera. So all of this is through the off-campus housing website and the neighborhoods are in the graduate student ambassador handbook that I mentioned for whichever campus you're studying in. Our orientation and our course registration emails will be sent closer to the summer time frame. And then you book your flight, your train, your car, however you're planning to get your boat, uh, however you're planning to get to Northeastern. And um, you'll want to check in with the Office of Global Services if you're an international student once you get here. Uh, you'll want to finish paying all of your tuition fees. Scholarships will be applied to that point um, as per whatever has been received in your enrollment portal. I know there are many questions on scholarships. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, and, and then you start setting up your new apartment. For prospective students, there's still time to apply for fall 2024. International students outside of the United States can apply through uh, through June 1st, and um, domestic students can apply through August 1st. If you are interested in applying for spring 2025, all international students uh, need to apply by September 15th, and domestic students can apply through December 1st. Tips and tricks. Uh, the College of Engineering has rolling admissions if you are an MS student and your file is complete. This means that your file needs to have all elements of the application requirements. Your application fee needs to be paid. And um, you need to make sure that if you have a degree from a foreign institution, you've closely followed and met all of the requirements for our um, foreign compliance. The PhD timeline is not rolling admission. The PhD is more complex. It requires an alignment between the faculty and the student for research. The student needs to be admissible uh, for uh, their academics. There also needs to be funding. We do not admit PhD students without five full years of funding. This means that there is a tuition and a stipend. And so if those three elements are all met, um, then you may be admitted into the PhD. But PhDs are not on the rolling admissions basis. 
If you are an MS student applying and your file is complete, you can expect a decision within about one month of applying to your program. Uh, in some cases, it's shorter. In a few cases, it's longer. But again, if your application is incomplete, if you've not paid your application fee, you've not met our foreign compliance, or there are any missing elements of your application, it will delay your decision timeline. So please make sure that it is complete. Um, but if it is, you can almost guarantee a decision from us within one month maximum. I encourage you very strongly to apply to more than one program. Um, you're able to select your campuses. So in many cases, students are admitted to their primary campus, but in some cases you may be admitted to your secondary or your tertiary campus. Um, we do also say, hey, we think you'd actually be a great fit for another campus. Um, and that is because there are like-minded individuals who are also attending that campus where you may find the experience super enriching. Um, but um, we hope and we try to admit you to your primary program uh, in your primary campus of interest. We do encourage you to submit secondary and tertiary applications because our programs are competitive. And so uh, there's no additional application fee to apply to many programs, so why not? Make sure that you're demonstrating your technical strengths. Um, and if you don't come from a technical background, but you're interested in joining us as an engineer, then apply to the MS Information Systems Bridge Program. And if you're looking for a scholarship, apply to MSIS Bridge in Toronto or Arlington. Uh, build your world and get excited for graduate school. Uh, as I mentioned, there's many resources, and we do encourage you to, uh, to take a look at the research that's happening within your department, to take a look at where your faculty come from, what industries do they go into, and how can you leverage that as part of your time here as your master's or your PhD. Attend events. We have amazing events. Our Wonder Week series is coming up. Um, that will uh, be an opportunity to hear directly from the program directors. If you attended the open house last week, it will be very similar, um, but maybe an opportunity to hear uh, questions that weren't previously answered. Uh, meet your global team. So whether you are a domestic student here in the United States or international, we have a wonderful team of coaches who you should connect with as you prepare to come to Northeastern. They can give you high level information about Northeastern University, paying your tuition, information um, about the student ambassadors. If you're not able to find it, they can connect you with them. Um, take a look at the program pages and make sure that you've thought about some of the courses that you may want to take. And of course, connect with a member of our grad ambassador team. Scholarship opportunities. Um, many of our students are interested in scholarships, but I will say that most of our graduate students fund their education through personal, family funds, or educational loans. We do offer a 25% scholarship for uh, students who are studying at um, for students who are studying at um, either our Boston campus in some of these programs. So, for example, climate science and engineering is offered in Boston. Um, Internet of Things, pharmaceutical engineering, wireless and network engineering are offered in Boston, and those will have a 25% scholarship that is applicable to the entire duration of your program. So um, you'll get a 25% scholarship every semester off of your tuition. Electrical and computer engineering, Seattle, information systems, Miami, Information Systems Vancouver, Information Systems Bridge in Toronto, Information Systems Bridge in Arlington will all also have a 25% scholarship. Um, again, if you're interested in uh, joining us in a beautiful campus, a beautiful city that is warm all year, attend Miami. Um, clearly, I am in Boston where it's been cold for several months and I'm ready for the warmth, which is, I think, why I'm, I'm myself am interested in, in Miami the most. Um, but, uh, but all of our campuses are truly in the most beautiful locations. Um, we have our campuses in Vancouver and Toronto, if you're interested in studying at our Canadian campuses. Um, and we also have our West Coast campuses for those of you who are interested in, in studying in the West Coast. 
today in celebration of uh, Pi Day and for the full month from March 14th until April 14th, we encourage you to submit an application using this uh, Pi Day 2024 fee waiver campaign. Uh, we have a requirement of two letters of recommendation, your unofficial transcripts, your statement of purpose, your resume, and if you are an international student um, who does not meet the qualifications for um, exemption from the English language test, then you are required to submit an IELTS, a TOEFL, or a Duolingo. We do not require the GRE. If you do submit the GRE, you do need to submit also your, um, your official test score. And if you are applying to chemical engineering or pharmaceutical engineering, they are GRE blind. Don't bother submitting your GRE. It actually gets suppressed from your application. They cannot see it. There's no way for the Department of Chemical Engineering or Pharmaceutical Engineering to see your GRE. So don't bother submitting it. And here's a little information about applying that code, PIDAY 2024, um, and make sure that you do enter it exactly as is. And keep in touch. Our graduate admissions team would love to answer any questions that you have. Um, please, again, do be sure to check your junk folder to make sure that you're not missing any communication from the university. Um, make sure that it hasn't gone to your junk folder. We have, um, as a, a university, we get over 100,000 applications. Uh, for the College of Engineering, we get over 25,000 applications uh, for the graduate school alone. And um, as such, it is um, when we're sending out mass emails to 25,000 students, then sometimes uh, Google flags us as spam. We're not spam. We're trying to give you the most and helpful information that we can give. So please do ensure that you're checking your junk folder so that you don't miss anything from us. Uh, direct line to the GSE admissions office is here, coe-gradadmissions at northeastern.edu, and a direct email to our ambassadors, um, where they're all actively monitoring is um, this listserv email here. We also have our FAQ, which is a wealth of resource. Um, I've recently gone through and asked the team to update our FAQs to make sure that everything is up to date and relevant for you, so you should be getting the freshest information on our FAQ page. And now I'd like to open it up to our Q&A. Um, I see that we have almost 100 questions here. So um, 100 questions and 22 minutes. I'll do my very best to go through um, and answer as many as we can. Um, do people from data analytics engineering programs have a nice opportunity for co-ops and jobs? Yes. Data analytics engineering is one of our fastest growing programs. Um, you'll have the opportunity to study in Boston, Seattle, or uh, um, Vancouver. And in both our U.S. and our Canadian campuses, we have incredible opportunities for co-op. Um, is there a lot of construction on campus? This is coming from a student at a big state school who is tired of weaving between construction uh, sites to get to classes. Uh, very interesting question and not one that I've gotten before, um, but I do empathize with you on the construction. Um, uh, no, and yes. So the university is continuing to grow and develop. And as such, we're building new buildings that are opening for our graduate students. Um, we recently concluded the EXP building, but I will say that um, Northeastern University, and I'm speaking specifically for Boston, but this is true for all of our other global campuses. We are a beautiful campus environment within a city. And there's almost like an invisible wall around our campus where um, it is green grass. You can see it here in the background. Green grass, super lush flowers, and it's a little bubble. And then you leave and there's the city and the construction, right? But the campus itself, um, I'm not constantly weaving between construction and dodging. You see it here and there, but it's few and far between. Um, it's also interesting in the way that the campus is developing out around the Boston area and expanding into some of the, the neighborhoods that house our, um, our leading hospitals in the world, uh, some of the biofarm facilities. Um, so we're, we're 
expanding out. So if you're in the core of campus, no, you're not going to be in the middle of a new building getting developed. Um, but if you go to the peripherals of campus, then yes, um, you're likely to see some construction, but it is overall a very pleasant environment. This is also true for our, our other campuses. So where we're launching our campuses, um, we're creating some of the best and impressive uh, state-of-the-art facilities at these uh, these areas. And um, so there may be some construction, but overall, um, very, very pleasant. Um, okay, let's see. Um, Uh, I have a student who is uh, noting that faculty are not responding to their email. Um, I apologize. It's very common, actually. Um, faculty, we have a, a couple hundred faculty for uh, tens of thousands of students who email them. And our faculty are focused on the current students who are here very much. Um, that is their, their primary focus. And so if you have a, a member of the admissions team could contact you if you have a question or one of our graduate ambassadors, if you have a program specific question, um, but um, do um, do allow our faculty to continue to do what they do best, which is teach our students and build transformative engineers. How many CPT months do we get uh, on an F1 visa that the co-op will fall under? So the CPT is used on co-op for four, six, or eight months. And all of our programs within the College of Engineering are STEM eligible, which means that you get your 12-month OPT followed by your 24-month STEM extension for a total of 36 months in the United States after graduation. I submitted an application more than a month ago and there's no update, um, just awaiting on the review. Uh, it is likely that if you submitted it over a month ago that you're missing materials. So please log into your portal and take a look. Um, we don't usually have complete applications sitting for more than one month. Uh, if I do a co-op with CPT, would I be able to work after graduation with an F1 visa? Yes, you would utilize your OPT for that. Uh, can you please tell me how we can access the handbook? Yes, absolutely. So um, you can access the handbook, search College of Engineering, new student info and orientation Northeastern. And that first link that should come up will be that um, page for all of our admitted students that will have under the grad from your graduate ambassadors, your, your handbook is in there. We are updating it a bit, so it may not be the latest document. Um, it was updated last semester. We, we keep it pretty updated, but it will be incredibly relevant to you. Can we apply directly to the PhD program? And if not accepted into the PhD, will it directly apply to an MS degree? You can apply directly to a PhD program with a bachelor's only. You do not need to have a master's. Uh, that is called um, a direct uh, entry into a PhD. If you have a master's in a relevant field, you're generally admitted into advanced entry PhD. And um, if you are interested in also being considered for an MS, when you apply to the PhD, select the box that says, please consider me for an MS. Um, a student said, I love this school and I can't wait to join the College of Engineering. Uh, we are equally excited. Um, I, I get uh, very excited in the summer uh, to see all of our new students coming in. And uh, my favorite part of the year is uh, in the fall when uh, campus is just filled with students and I get to see and meet all new faces. And I especially love... Um, I do, I host many webinars uh, with several thousand students, but I look pretty closely at the names and I get extremely excited um, when I bump into somebody and uh, they say, oh, I saw you on a webinar and we get to connect and, and actually see you in person. Um, I, I really genuinely get a lot of joy from it. Um, I received an email saying that I need to update my foreign credential evaluation documents. I did that, but the portal has shown that the document has been um, hasn't shown that it's been acknowledged. Um, can I reply to the email with the document? Um, it sometimes takes them up to 10 days. If it's been more than 10 days, then yes, please um, reply to that email. That is a team that is not part of our admissions team. It is a, a central team that reviews all of the documents for us. So reply directly to them if you want the quickest answer. What kind of jobs can international MS students uh, take up while in Boston? Okay, I think the important thing is that you said while in Boston. So um, 
uh, not after graduation. We have um, in our program specific sessions, faculty will go over what kind of jobs you'll get after you graduate. While in Boston, if you are studying, if you're an international student studying on an F1 visa, you have to work on campus. Um, this is not true for students who are studying in our Canadian campuses. And for that, the Office of Global Services and the Canadian Student Employment will be able to help you navigate. But um, if you are an international student, you have to work on campus. And we have um, a huge menu of jobs available for students through our on-campus employment office. Um, <clears throat> uh, which results are considered for admissions? If a student uh, has uh, not so well for undergrad, but postgrad work are excellent, we consider all elements of an application. And I will say that our faculty are excellent in reviewing all elements of your application. Um, I have not received any financial aid and I got admitted to MS uh, Data Analytics. Um, it is possible that you um, did not, um, you. We do not have a scholarship for data analytics engineering. So I'm going to pull back up this scholarship page uh, so that you do know which programs to apply to. Again, all of these have a 25% scholarship um, for the duration. If you applied to one of these programs, say that you applied to ECE in Boston and you actually want the 25% scholarship for Seattle, just let a member of our admissions team know. And as long as your concentration matches what we offer in Seattle, we can update your um, campus to Seattle. Similarly, um, information systems, if you say, oh, actually, I want to study in Miami or Vancouver, um, but I applied to Boston or um, one of the other campuses, we can update it. Um, no problem for you. Um, is Duolingo acceptable for co-op? I believe so, yes, uh, but do connect with a member of our co-op team uh, when you go into your co-op course. Will I be eligible do, to do a co-op as part of a master's in chemical engineering if I have a TOEFL score of 90? Yes. Do I have to apply for the co-op after um, or is it automatic consideration? Uh, yes. Um, so uh, co-op is like a job. You have to apply for it, but our faculty, our co-op faculty are ready to help you prepare to apply for your co-op. They teach you all the tips and tricks that you need to know uh, to make you super strong as an applicant for a co-op. Uh, when are we going to get feedback of our application for fall 24? Again, we have a rolling admission. So as long as your application is complete, you should get a decision within one month. How can I submit two different statement of purposes for both programs? There's an option when you're submitting your uh, secondary application to add a statement of purpose. And if you're having any trouble doing this, just contact a member of our admissions team and we can walk you through. Um, oh, very interesting. So a student is interested in knowing the difference between data analytics engineering and the professional study in engineering. Data analytics engineering is a highly technical degree um, where we actually prepare students for the engineering side of big data. Whereas uh, professional analytics engineering focuses more on the GUI side. Um, and so it's more on the, um, the interface, the graphic interface that you're designing and the output and uh, taking a look at the results. Um, we have amazing data analytics uh, ambassadors who would be happy to help you with this. Um, is there any funding for the MS? Again, here are the um, funding opportunities that are outlined here. Um, I've been admitted to engineering management, congratulations. Claimed my account, Oy. Um, but I have some doubts regarding after logging into the student hub, I'm redirected to another website asking the accept code of student conduct. Should I complete that? Yes. So we have a code of student conduct that is required to be completed by all of our students. And that basically says, that you will adhere to Northeastern's code of student conduct in um, acting professionally as your your time here at Northeastern and, and that you treat your faculty, staff and others with respect. The enrollment fee is $100. I have applied to a PhD um, and um, in chemical engineering, I'd like to apply to a secondary program. Will my recommendations for the first application cover the second application? Yes, no problem at all. Um, 
what are the requirements for international students as part of foreign compliance? So when you are on the admissions page, if you Google Northeastern University graduate admissions, it will take you to our admissions requirements. And within that, we have super detailed uh, requirements outlined that will inform you of what exactly you need to submit. I'm an international student with no scholarship in Boston. How much should I prepare to cover for the minimum cost of living and tuition? So there are two responses for this. Um, the first is that there's an actual official amount that you need to show as an international student on the I-20. So on the Office of Global Services website, you'll see um, a financial document that actually says, this is what we expect you'll need to cover. The cost of tuition is on our tuitions page. You multiply that times 32 for your tuition coverage. And then I do recommend connecting with ambassadors to say, okay, exactly how much should I set aside for rent, transportation, and the likes? And they would be happy to answer this. Our ambassadors are super transparent and they'll have no problem telling you exactly what they pay. Do you have to finish your master's program before starting a PhD? It depends on if you're admitted into the PhD with a master's along the way, or if you're doing a master's program and then transitioning into a PhD. And in some cases, master's students start, identify a faculty who they want to do research with at the PhD, and they forego the master's and go directly into a PhD. It is all dependent on how you and your faculty wish to, to frame your academic journey. What is the typical batch size? Um, we, our programs are growing very quickly. And so it's actually hard to say what the typical batch size is. For some programs, we have uh, students coming in uh, at 10, 20, and some they come in at 1500. So it really depends on what program you're in. Uh, some of our larger programs have several hundred students coming in every semester. Um, and some of our smaller programs have 20. Again, if you're like information systems, for example, is our largest program. If you're coming here in Boston, you're going to be joining a class of over 1,200 information systems students. But if you're saying, I love the information systems program, but I want a smaller cohort and an opportunity to have very intimate connections with our faculty, then I do recommend that you apply to information systems in the global campus network. Um, Miami, Arlington, Oakland are excellent choices. Does the university help to connect to companies while we apply for co-op? Yes, that is what our co-op faculty are absolutely um, superstars at. And so I do recommend uh, connecting with our co-op faculty and they will make the connections for you. If we do a co-op, will it extend the expected graduation timeline? In many cases, yes, but in some cases, no. It is super important that you work with your co-op faculty and your student services advisor to map your graduation timeline. And so if you're looking to graduate within the two years, it's possible. If you're looking to extend to 2.5 years, that's also possible. Are there any MS programs or campuses that provides funding or scholarship opportunities? Yes, absolutely. Um, so here is the list on the screen here of our programs and our campuses that have uh, scholarships of 25%. Is it possible to get an in-person tour? Absolutely. Our ambassadors host in-person tours. Go onto the Graduate Ambassador website or send them an email, and they would love to give you an in-person tour. Um, they're also working on virtual tours, and um, we did do a, a virtual tour of our Oakland campus, which is so wonderful and, and so phenomenal. All right. Uh, how can I connect with faculty for PhD admissions? First, anyone who's interested in PhD admissions should go on to our YouTube page um, where you can see if you can access it through the ambassador website and you can see the best practices for applying to a PhD program and look at that and then follow the advice of the ambassadors. I've given admission to the College of Engineering, but I have no engineering experience and I'm an international student. Um, can I change my program? Firstly, if you have no engineering experience, but you were admitted, then our faculty saw something absolutely incredible inside of you that they think you should be admitted uh, to the College of Engineering. But if you're looking to change your program, 
uh, within uh, the university, then yes, that's absolutely possible. Once you come, you just submit a change of program request. Um, but have confidence that we have an amazing uh, faculty that are here to help make you into a stellar engineer. They saw something in your background that says this individual is going to be impressive and they have confidence that you can become a great engineer. Are international students eligible for scholarships? Yes, uh, again, right here on the page are all of our programs and in some cases, the campuses that offer scholarships of 25%. I want to apply to a PhD for fall 24, can I apply now? It's a little bit late. Um, most of our PhD decisions have gone out. Our deadline was December 15th, but you can apply. In some cases, a student who hasn't accepted their offer, a faculty may need to fill for research. So um, there may be an opportunity for you to still uh, be considered. Do information systems in Silicon Valley offer 25% scholarship? No, we do not. Um, if you're information systems and you're looking for the 25% scholarship, you can change your campus to Information Systems Miami, Vancouver. Um, I think those are all of our information systems. Yes. So I recommend uh, doing that. For master's classes, how many classes do you take per semester and can we take more or less? Full-time load um, for an international student is two courses per semester. You cannot take less if you're international, but you can if you're domestic. Um, you, in some cases, can take three, but you need a special approval and a course override. I need to restore my withdrawn application. Can I get help on this? Uh, you're going to need to email a member of the admissions team if you've withdrawn your application. I'm not sure uh, that you'll be able to reapply, but you can you can connect with a member of our team. Can we apply to more than one application using the application fee waiver? Yes, as long as you're within the College of Engineering. Uh, this application fee waiver is only for College of Engineering. It is not applicable to any other college. How much time does it take to receive a reply to students from the ambassadors? It should be very quick. Um, they are current students. So if they're studying for a, a huge exam or if they have a big paper, there may be a delay. But our ambassadors take their role pretty seriously. They're extremely enthusiastic about bringing prospective students uh, into the university and helping you feel comfortable and ready to start your grad school journey. Um, so if you're not receiving a reply, feel free to send an email to me and I can help um, ping them. Do I need to send my official GRE score from the test center before I receive an admissions decision or a self-reported accepted? GRE, if you report your GRE score, we do require the official. Okay, I think we've covered a lot of the questions. Uh, how many CPT months? Again, uh, four, six, or eight months, depending on um, which length of the co-op that you wish to do. How many uh, or what percent of our students go on co-op? It's about 52% across the board, regardless of the program. I've not received a financial aid, MSDA. I, I've answered your question several times. Um, we don't offer a scholarship for data analytics. Um, I need help with engineering management, choosing a concentration. Um, I would absolutely connect with an ambassador. They would be more than happy to hear a little bit about what your interests are career-wise and then helping to select the, the best path for you. Uh, is there any flexibility on the admissions committee about the English proficiency? No. Um, IELTS 6.5 is our minimum, and we actually do auto-deny students if you don't meet that minimum. So um, if you do not meet our minimum, then apply via the Global Pathways program, because in no cases will we admit a student who does not meet our IELTS TOEFL 
um, or Duolingo minimum. That is um, a very hard stop to the application. It is the only element of the application that we will not waive on. When will the final admissions results be announced? Um, again, generally students who submit an application that is complete and have paid the application fee uh, receive their admissions decision within one month. Are PhDs funded by unit? PhDs are funded by faculty. And so faculty have uh, discretionary funds, startup funds, grant funds. There are many different forms, uh, donor funds, um, federal grants, many, many, many different forms of funding, and they are directly connected to the PI. And so it is through the PI that um, our funding is allocated and then students are selected. Can we apply to scholarships for students pursuing a program that is not listed here? Um, if you have external scholarships, yes, but we don't have any other scholarships beyond this. Um, with a few exceptions. I think we've answered most of the questions here. Um, I'm going to end uh, our Q&A portion of today's session, and I will encourage you all to join us for our Wonder Week, which will take place in a few weeks. Um, it will be listed on our events page, and that will be a real opportunity for you to dive into uh, the Graduate School of Engineering programs, where you'll have uh, an opportunity to hear from our faculty who run the programs, our student ambassadors in those programs, and uh, really have a dialogue about program-specific sessions. I want to thank all of you for joining today. Uh, this was such a, a wonderful session. And um, a huge thanks to um, Marissa, who has been answering questions in the background here, other members of our graduate admissions team who helped set up this session, our graduate ambassadors who are available um, to help answer any questions that you have. And lastly, a huge thank you to all of you who have joined. Um, congratulations for those of you who have been accepted to the College of Engineering. We look forward to having you uh, join us at Northeastern. And for prospective students, we very much look forward to reviewing your application. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.